Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host. And this is the show where we discuss all things Amazon private label and how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show. Get it? AM, PM podcast. As a matter of fact, I just finished barbecuing outside. It's the evening and we have a really cool barbecue area just outside. It's uh, got a big outdoor fireplace and a pool. And while I was out there grilling up those steaks, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hey guys. I am excited today because I am here with Rolando Rosas. How are you doing, Rolando? I'm doing pretty good, Manny. How about yourself? I'm good. Um, good. But yeah, welcome to the show. Um, I, I want to let uh, everybody know a little bit about you. Um, you've been on Amazon since 2014. Uh, you got into private label in 2017, this year, right? And you're now, correct me if I'm wrong, a $4 million per year uh, company? That, that's correct. That's correct. Cool. Is that four million? Is that uh, off of Amazon sales, or is that just everything that you do? Everything. So um, we have sales on Amazon um, that are private label, and we actually got into that from reselling other products. And we still resell products today. Um, we have our own website. Uh, we have. We're on eBay. We're on Walmart. Uh, but those are still smaller players when you compare that to Amazon. Okay, awesome. Um, for fun, it sounds like you want to be an archaeologist, or you are an archaeologist. What's that all about? Well, you know, back in college, uh, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be allowed today because back then there was no Facebook. There was no um, instant messaging like today. Uh, we went out to the Ukraine uh, and dug up some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. But during that time, uh, lots of weird things happen. Um, food wasn't available. Like, like you could go down to a store and just buy food. Uh, it was they had just broken off from Russia, and so they still had um, problems with banking and money. And so tense it was a times. Month. It was very, very weird. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, but I, I liked it. I, it was fun. It was unique. Um, our professor asked, "Hey, we need some people that could be." rugged and rough out in the, the terrain and boy it was it was quite rough for a for a month uh I, I don't i don't think if some kid was out in the middle of nowhere saying mommy we ran out of food they would probably let their kid go back to that school anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm actually heading back uh, or not heading back i'm heading there uh for the first time that that general area ukraine romania um moldova um i think next year early so i'm, I'm looking forward to it. it should be cool it, it, it was cool. I tell, just just as a aside, I was the darkest looking guy in town all over. So the kids pointing at me, people taking pictures with me. It was it was a very really interesting experience. A uh, superstar. Uh, I guess <laughs> you could call it that. Uh, awesome. Well, um, let's get into your numbers here. People always want to know a little bit more about uh, where you're at. You um, you you're at four million per year. Um, what are your profit margins on something like? That? Right around 30, close to 35%. Um, if you take an average of all the products, uh, you have some that are higher, some that are lower, but the average will be about 35%. You say all the products. How many ASINs make up that revenue stream? About 300. 300. Okay. Are these all private label? Are they yours? No. No. They're, we have about 20% private label, uh, and the rest are products that we resell from other manufacturers. Okay. What percentage of your revenue would you say comes from the private label side versus uh, reselling? Uh, depending on the month, any anywhere between 15 to 20 percent, and that's ramping up uh, from zero percent. And uh, it's been a learning lesson in how to how to source products, how to um, how to put those products out there so that people are aware of it. What makes your product different from the other ones that are on Amazon? Uh, so it's it's been a learning curve on how to get those products up to speed so that buyers look at it, buyers. Uh, go ahead and repeat purchases. So um, we're looking on launching more products in 2018. So we're we're just getting started on the private label side in in terms of the the big scope of things. Okay. Now you you also have another business uh, that you do as well outside of Amazon, uh, having to do with headsets, similar to what you're wearing right now, right? That's right. That's right. So our our headsets business is um, is also growing, and this this is a particular product that we sell from a from a company, and we help companies sound better so they could sell more. That's really the bottom line. Um, it, you can buy any of 
500 headsets on the market, but uh, our business is to try, try to get companies t- to improve the sound of their folks, their salespeople, their customer service people, and in some cases deal with challenges where folks are, are having difficulties actually interacting with customers. Um, and so we're retained to, to provide some services for them as well. Okay. Um, with private label um, individuals and organizations becoming popular, everybody's jumping in and doing this kind of stuff. What are your thoughts on where big brands are going to be going here? Do you think they're going anywhere? Uh, you know, that's the big debate. And I've heard a lot of folks say brands are dead and um, they're not, they're dead simply because Amazon's taken over or other brands, smaller brands like Anchor that have become a wild success you know, they, or private labelers. That's the thing. So is a company like Anchor a brand or a private label? I would say they're large enough where you can call them a brand. Uh, but uh, previous to this uh, e-commerce thing, I worked at Philip Morris working uh, with the Marlboro brand. And one of the things that you see is fluctuations. People will say the brand brands were dead in the 70s and in the 80s and in the 90s, in the early 2000s. That's been true for every market that where the market took a downturn or new players came into the market but people will still buy ferrari people will still buy mercedes people will still buy if you're a smoker they'll still buy marlboro even if there's something that's a a fraction of the price on the market uh it's all about brands brands are going to be around it's just who's going to take some of that share from them and i and i think that's where these new uh players coming into amazon are doing they're taking market share from bigger uh, companies that have just not had to compete. It doesn't mean they're going to go away. Gillette's not going away, right? right? Yeah. Bic's not going away. Um, uh, Nikes are not going to go away. Adidas is not going to go away. They're just going to, the players are just going to eat into their, um, into their market share, but they're definitely not dead. Okay. So you're in the electronics business, with your headsets, right? Yes. Um, what are you doing to stay competitive given how tough um, it is to be successful in, in consumer electronics? You know, uh, we have done two things that are that are quite different than most folks. Um, most folks talk about providing great customer service, and that's absolutely a must. But beyond customer service, uh, we uh, employ folks that are what we call analysts. Um, there's so much data out there uh, that you can take advantage of to use to market yourself, your product, um, look at how customers are interacting with your brand that we empower our people to look at data so that we can drive the numbers. And so um, our internal folks look at this data to try to see how we can best maximize our efforts. You know, we don't have an unlimited amount of resources. So we try to use everybody that's internally at the company to try to see how we could do better um, in in all the different metrics that are out there. So so what kind of data are they looking at? Um, so they're looking at um, the data that's available through Seller Central. Uh, we do also have other tools where we extract other data, uh, whether they're site visits, conversions, um, uh, ad spending, uh, interactions with customers, um, the average amount spent. Um, and one of the interesting things that we've found that the more a customer engages with us and interacts with us, the more they tend to spend. So our average customer on Amazon spends less than the ones that actually call us versus the ones that actually interact with us online through our own website. Uh, so those are the things that where we then redeploy resources and find out, okay, so if people are buying more through our website or through chatting with our folks, what are we doing that's different? And so what we've looked at is that customer service interaction, instead of having a true customer service person, they're, uh, they're more of a let's call it a sales engineer, somebody that actually can do customer service, but they have technical knowledge to the product the customer's looking for. So it's not, oh, is this available? Or is this, you know, in stock? Can I get the red or the blue or the yellow? Give me a tracking number. They're empowered to give them bit by bit on on details of the product. It's got soft cushions. It's got this. It's got a microphone. It works with this. It goes with that phone. So the customer feels some confidence and trust in us. And we can, in turn, earn their business, and they refer other, other clients. Uh, they come back and buy more. Um, and, and so that, that's what really sets us apart, our technical expertise when customers interact with us. And we use that to our advantage. 
Um, and we're trying to find on how, how to really exploit that on Amazon because Amazon has tools, but then they have some limits on what you could do. Okay. What are you mentioning tools? What kind of tools or secrets uh, can you share with the audience uh, that you use to properly service your customers? I don't want to give everything away. <laughs> or do I have to? You can give us at least one. How's that? Uh, well, one of the things that we really like is chat, uh, chatting with customers. Um, so it, it, we find that is it takes down some of the friction that uh, folks have with interaction. Voice chat There's or text chat? Text chat. Okay. Text chat. All right. So uh, customers can be wherever they want to be, whether they're at their office or they're in their bathroom, and they, they have questions. And having somebody on the other line that can answer those questions quickly, and we use something called Live Help Now. And it really empowers our folks to also look at uh, previous customer interactions and then match that to a particular question. So we're able to get a question and answer session going re pretty rapidly. It's kind of annoying if you go to somebody's website and you say, hey, um, can you tell me a little about this product? Is, will it work for me? Mm -hmm. And it takes like two minutes to get a response. Right. We have that down to seconds. Okay. Uh, it's no matter what question it is. Interesting. Okay. Now that obviously that doesn't work on Amazon. Um, well, that it doesn't. What it, it doesn't. Does it work on Shopify or do you have to have a specific type of website? Um, it could work across. Um, it's a web based, so you can you can use it outside of 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 your particular platform if you want to just you know use a browser session. But okay. you can plug it into Shopify, BigCommerce, and several other carts out there. Okay. Cool. Is this a, a is it like a bot? Is it an automated chat or are they typing or to a real person? It's a real person. Uh, okay. They're U.S. based, uh, and and so I just wanted to throw out that that some folks are always looking to outsource, and um, and some functions you want to have in source. And for us, it's our technical expertise, um, and especially in this particular area. Um, customers want rapid answers, mm -hmm. and if you're trying to train somebody offshore to answer customer questions, they will have a general idea. But when you get to the nuts and bolts and you want some rapid fire answers because mm -hmm. people now expect they expect because of Amazon and other sites out there they want answers yeah. they don't want to wait around even if it's a minute right uh, so they they'll hop off the chat if you're not if you're not Johnny on the spot with with answers so our folks on the other line are able to get an answer within seconds where do you hire these people where are they located mostly uh, we have uh, so we've brought folks in from within the industry Okay, uh, right, gotcha. And that's that's really been the key. You can bring somebody off the street and train them, but to make them an expert will take years. You have to have experience, uh, yeah. And so that for us, because that's the tool where we can get people to spend more mm -hmm. is on the chats, that's where the, it, it pays off to have somebody that's in source that's an expert rather than somebody that's offshore doing um, this type of work. Okay. You know, we have other folks from offshore doing work for us, but not that particular function. Okay, so you have bodies and seats actually doing this. Uh, do you guys have any software that you deploy that automates um, your business, keeps things running efficiently? Yeah, that's the biggest. That was the biggest challenge when we started growing. Um, is you know we could bring more experts in, but it's it, it pays off to automate. So we use a software like Scubana uh, to automate our ma our order management, our inventory. Um, some forecasting, uh, um, a number of things. It brings all our orders into one platform. Okay. So we use automation to our advantage, and we're trying to find a way to take that to the next level so that we can ha automate even more. Uh, and I think as a small businesses, it's only to the benefit of, uh, of whether you're a one-person shop, two-person shop, or more, to find ways to automate because then you can redeploy people into other functions. How do you keep your competitors from coming in and just uh, taking over what you spent all this hard time and money developing? Any strategies there? That's the thing that gives you heartburn. <laughs> I got to <laughs> yes. tell you, there or is, there, there, or, or more, uh, there is no magic bullet, but there, um, we had a, we had a saying at Philip Morris, we want to create a moat. Mm -hmm. So what, one of the things that we do is uh, we know that people can copy and do what, what you're doing, but what are we doing to make it more difficult? So, one of the things that we like to do is pair our products up in bundles with a number of different things. So we try to find how can we best look for something complementary to what the customer is looking for that would make sense. So bundling is one way to do it. Uh, the other way is to find um, products that are not 
so easy to duplicate. So somebody could sell, again, gets back to the, you know, somebody could sell this product and copy it, but are they selling it to the right target audience? Uh, are they are are they describing what this really does in a, in a meaningful way? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, in, on our landing pages and product listings, we also go the extra mile in terms of describing what this thing does. Uh, most folks that are on Amazon, they'll just put a, a short title, two or three bullet points, if that, and a, maybe a sentence for the description. So taking it beyond that and providing the customer with more than enough information. Sometimes it could be too much, mm -hmm. but what we find more is better when it comes to Amazon, especially yeah. when you're, when customers are searching around because they'll find you before the competitor that's got one image. Uh, Those one are the markets we want to get into because <laughs> one image, two bullet points. It sounds like you've got a, a it's, it's a shooting fish in a barrel if that's what your competitors are doing. Well, you hit it on the head. It's about finding a niche. And right. so, if I can exploit a niche, even if, even for us, which is ultra competitive in the consumer electronics space, yeah. we have focused in a smaller niche where uh, hands-free devices, um, there's folks selling it, but they're not selling it probably like us. And because of that, we're able to exploit an area in that market where there's a void for customers and, you know, we fill that void. Okay. You talked about bundles. I'm just going to step back a second. You, yep. you, you mentioned... Um bundling and as doing something so that they can't copy exactly are you talking about just doing like two packs or three packs or are you adding specific things that make it difficult both, both. give us an so, example so we'll take um we'll take let's say like the headset i have on my head and we can we sell it in three packs of that uh, we could also add a a free um microphone cushion so just like you have on your microphone there there are specific cushions for the microphones for these type of headsets and we'll um, sell that along with the uh, item. So that's provided for free. Um, okay. Or we'll add some other, um, like the actual ear pieces, those cushions that sit on your ear, we may provide that um, as a bundled uh, bonus pack. And so customers respond to that. And what we've found is on average, um, it could gain half a star to a one whole star on the review for, for the same product that you might find somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Because the customer figures they're getting some value. Now, not everybody is going to gravitate to that, but we don't need everybody. We just need some mm. that find value in that. And that alone will then start building more customers that find, okay, what else would they sell? What, what else can I use in the office besides um, this particular hands-free or something that I can use from them? Because these guys provide value to me. Right. Okay, cool. Um, do you get these things manufactured here in the U.S. or overseas? All of the... Um, everything is when it comes to electronics or their accessories pretty much are overseas All china, china yeah mostly china uh do you guys do you guys have any challenges issues over there you know the biggest challenge is the language um yeah you, you have folks um we have both traders as well as suppliers that are in china and the folks that speak better english uh, mm -hmm. are very hard to find in china uh, you may have some expats, uh, but in our particular field, we 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 just they're all Chinese nationals, and um, the language and you know it, it takes some time to understand their version of English. Mm -hmm. um, sourcing products for us and quality control isn't it hasn't been an issue uh, because we found suppliers that are just in this field and doing this for the big guys, and so we're just another outlet for them instead of just producing product for the big players. Okay. And you guys are, do you use Alibaba or do you have your own sourcing agents or what's the process for finding new stuff? Alibaba for some, some things that may be hard to find. Uh, but we have some, mostly the suppliers that we, um, lean on are the ones that are producing stuff for us already. And through them, we've been able to get products that we're currently uh, using in our private label area. Okay, cool. What would be, um, you, you gave some interesting tips so far. What would be some other golden nuggets that uh, you could provide? Any questions, anything that I haven't actually asked that would help uh, an Amazon seller uh, with private label? The thing with private label or even selling on Amazon that, that's really important is, is, is two, twofold. One, you have to understand your customer. Uh, and that's more than just, oh, we know people are looking for this product. You have to understand their psychology actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and if I step back, well, we were on Amazon when we launched, we didn't sell one product for nine months. Not one. 
And it took nine months. After nine months, we started to reevaluate. And once we evaluate, reevaluated and made some adjustments, sales, sales started to come through. Um, and they just kept growing every single month. And so knowing what the psychology of a customer really helps you then better craft a message around what makes your product different, what makes your product better. And I would say that's been one of the things that's been our biggest advantage, understanding the psychology of the customer that's trying to buy that particular product. How do you guys, are, are you the person that does the product launches for each product? Is that you? Um, I have I have some folks on my team that help me, um, and they they we we do collaborative work, and uh, we just go back. They're they're in different offices. One is in Boston, one is in uh, Denver, and we just go back and forth on on imagery, messaging, um, how to launch, and uh, timing, logistics. There's a lot of different aspects that that can help the product launch successfully, but uh, w without the collaboration and and putting a schedule on when we want to launch, getting ready for the Christmas and holidays or, or beyond uh, really makes it difficult. But uh, when you have everybody working together, we use something like Trello to try to keep ourselves in projects um, running on time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're able to launch products successfully. Okay, cool. If you can go back uh, to the beginning and meet yourself, you're talking to yourself um, before you jumped onto Amazon, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> there are going to be days you're going to have a lot of heartburn. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of success stories out there mm. where people uh, hear, oh, wow, yeah, these, these guys are killing it. They're seven figures and whatnot. That is true. That can happen. But to stay and be sustainable on these platforms takes a lot more work than the you know overnight success. That, that happens. Mm. But the vast majority – of sellers that are trying to be successful need to think about how to be sustainable because like you said there could be competitors all of a sudden they they come on bo online and you see your sales dropping you don't know why so you have to it's a daily monthly quarterly thing that you have to keep sharpening the sword uh, if you don't the sword gets dull yeah absolutely and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of learning the learning never stops um, if you want to be good at anything especially this this is business um, it takes a, takes a while. It, and, and well, you said it learning. So uh, just myself, I've been to several conferences this year where I've interacted with people, networked with people, learning on, on what's working, what's not. And if everything stayed the same today and didn't change, we could easily sit back and I've got it all under control, but it doesn't, you know, Amazon changes, Walmart changes something, competitors now, algorithms changes. So you can't stay stale and you can't stand still. Otherwise your, comp your competition will pass you up. And when you start coasting, you could coast for a little bit, mm -hmm. but if you make it a, uh, it's part of the culture well, yeah, we got it under control, cool. you'll find your competitors pass you up real quickly. Awesome. You said you had uh, some services to help businesses, um, you know, communicate more clearly. Um, if people wanted to find out more about that service, they want to reach out to you specifically. Obviously, we'll post, uh, we'll tag you in our, our Facebook group. Um, okay. What would be the best way uh, for them to, to reach out to you? Okay. Um, the, the best way to reach out to us is get a uh, hold of our website, helpmyheadset.com. That'll bring you into uh, one of our sites. And what we're willing to do for your audience is uh, the first 15 folks that want to um, contact us, get a hold of us, we'll give them a free um, um, consulting. Um, and it's normally like about 500 bucks to do that. And we'll talk about what we could use for their businesses, um, what they could use with their salespeople or their help desk folks that would be most appropriate uh, for, for their needs. Cool. How do they, what should they say? They heard you on the AM, PM podcast? Yeah, absolutely. They, right. Hey, I heard you on Manny's AM, PM podcast okay cool can, Very cool, can you hook me up and we'll say yes we'll hook you up nice awesome i haven't tried your service this is uh you know we're just talking about for the first time so if you guys try the service and uh you like what rolando uh is offering or you have good success post it in our facebook group let everybody know you all, we always want to pass on good businesses um this is not an affiliate deal or anything like this no We've never talked about this uh you know prior to to today so um and, and guys, um, if you're not part of the Facebook group, we have that over at the FBA High Rollers. So, uh, or you can go to ampmpodcast.com forward slash Facebook, and uh, that'll take you there. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're 
watching this or listening to this because you saw it there anyway. So Rolando, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And okay. um, yeah, if you have any uh, crazy breakthroughs, more golden nuggets, anything you want to share, reach out to me and we'll talk. Absolutely. Thank you, Manny. I Take appreciate that. it. Bye-bye now. All righty. Hey, I need 90 seconds of your time. It could literally change your Amazon business. I am super excited to finally announce the release of Helium 10's new Chrome extension. First of all, it's free, so make sure you get it right now. This awesome tool helps you while you are surfing for products on Amazon by displaying secret information on the product page for you. For example, if I ever have a bad product review and I don't know which of my customers wrote it, you know, like when the name of the person that left the review says Amazon customer or maybe Bambi21, <laughs> well, I can now click one button with the Helium 10 Chrome extension and it will show me which customer left that review so that I can reach out to that customer and perhaps send them a new unit or make sure that they get top customer service to resolve the issue that led to the bad review in the first place. That's just one of the many things this extension can do. While browsing Amazon products, I can use the Helium 10 Chrome extension to get thousands of keyword phrases for the product I am looking at using the Cerebro Reverse ASIN feature that's built in. If you missed what I just said, I called it Cerebro. That's the Spanish word for brain, Cerebro. So this extension allows me to calculate my net profits on a product that I'm looking at right there on the page. It'll show me the product, it fills in some information, and then I can find out right away what all the fees are and whether this is something that I want to actually go and source or not. I can also use this to see the inventory levels of any of my competitors. I can use it to see when the best selling times of the year are for that product so I know when to really stock up or when to jump into the market or to see if it's truly seasonal. I can see the other brands that this seller owns at a glance and find new product opportunities. Listen, this is a free extension and it's crazy not to be using it. If you're using other Chrome extensions to do parts of what Helium 10 can do right now with this Chrome extension, get rid of the other ones. Just use this one, okay? There's a lot of features that are coming, so get it now. And check for the videos in our FBA High Rollers Facebook group because that's where I'm going to be posting how to use this tool or the way I use this tool to generate big revenue streams after using this extension. Get it for free at Helium10.com. Create a free account at Helium10.com and you can download the extension once you've logged in. It's a game changer, guys. So do it right now. Helium10.com. You've been listening to the AM PM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider, insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.